Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at the differences between ambient occlusion and shadows, and how you can use them together to get the best possible image in SketchUp. So ambient occlusion is actually a newer feature as of this recording. This is something that was released with the 2024 version of SketchUp. Um, it, well, it makes ambient occlusion shadows, which are different from the direct shadows that are created by the shadows tool. Uh, so we're going to talk about how they're different, how to use them, and uh, how to combine them to make the best possible image. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, so I got a model here. This model is uh, a model we did on a couple live streams a few years ago. Um, it's a cool model in that it's got a lot of nooks and crannies, and really it's going to look good when we talk about ambient occlusion. So the first thing before I even go in and flip on ambient occlusion or shadows, I want to look at just the surfaces. So right now we have the standard camera. So if I come here to shadow and I drop this down, use sun for shading is turned off, which means the only light in the screen is basically coming from the camera. So where I'm looking at the model from. So the faces that are most facing me, this face right here, this face right here, are the most white of all the faces. Faces that are slightly away, like these side faces get a little darker and then faces that are less facing towards the camera like the ground are getting even more darker. So it's, as I, if I flip this around and see, see how this face light, lightened up? That was because of that default setting. So that's, I'm just saying that that's, that's where we're operating from. That's square one is uh, no, no sun for shading, standard lighting. Uh, with that, let's go into our styles and let's turn on ambient occlusion. I'm just gonna flip it on. And there we go, it's, oh, I love it. Immediately you get a little more depth here, right? So any place a face is hitting another face, we get this little bounce shadow uh, right around that. It's, it's not, has nothing to do with the light source. It has nothing to do with uh, the main shadows. It's all about those faces coming together and the little ambient shadow that's created inside there. So when we look at that, uh, we do have the ability to change like the distance. How how far out is that going to run? How how deep is that going to run? Um, and then intensity is it really super deep? I don't like I don't like going all the way on this one because it's a little too dark, a little too I don't know. I don't like going all the way light. Out, obviously, there's a little. Too much. So actually, the the default I feel really feels pretty good. Maybe intensify it a little bit, a little more distance. So something to note about these sliders, these are not relative to your geometry. These are relative to the world. So um, something I want to note, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to make a copy of it real quick just to illustrate this point. And I'm going to scale that up by 10. All right. So if I go back in here and look at this, you can see what my, see what my shadows look like, my ambient occlusion shadows just right here. If I zoom out, and then look back in on this one. So the settings are exactly the same, but you can see, you can hardly even tell that there's ambient occlusion. Now, a little, get a little shadow right here. The, the issue is that these this distance and intensity is relative to like the normal size of the real world, right? So this is, this is huge now. This is 10 times the size of reality. This is too big. Um, so my shadows, no matter if I crank it all the way up, crank it, just crank it, I still only get a light shadow because the geometry is so big. So it is an important point. Make sure that when you're modeling, you're modeling real size, otherwise ambient occlusion is going to look weird. Same thing if I model too small. If I model this as like, you know, a desktop model, a little teeny tiny thing, when I turn on ambient occlusion, I'm going to get these little, I'm going to get these huge overwhelming shadows because uh, the shadows are relative to the real world. So I'm going to delete that and we'll go back. We'll go back over here. All right, so that's ambient occlusion. I'm gonna turn ambient occlusion off and I'm going to turn on shadows. So I'm just gonna turn on regular shadows and this is what a regular shadow is. So a shadow is telling me there's a sun somewhere up in the sky and it's casting light down and where it hits, it gets this bright white and where it is occluded, it's going to add these shadows. So I just explained what shadow was. Hopefully you guys already had that down because you're you know, human beings on the earth. So it creates these shadows. Um, very different from the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion has nothing to do with direct sun. 
shadows are only about that direct light. So with this, of course, I have the ability to change the time of day. I can change the date, which is gonna change where the sun is in the sky. Pretty simple stuff. Um, but I also have the ability to change my light and dark. So this is something that's kind of overlooked, I think. Uh, I can make my light blazing white. I can make my white light, uh, you know, subdued a little bit. Um, and same with dark. I can make my dark just oppressive or I can make it disappear completely. So uh, it is possible to get some some weird looking effects with this, but uh, yeah, it's something you want might want to play with when you're when you're you know, like I said, if you're trying to get a, a nice deep image, you might want to play with. I like to drop drop dark down. Really, is really I don't usually mess with light. I usually kind of leave that where it is. But then I'll drop my dark a little bit darker depending on you know how extreme I want that to be. Ooh, that looks pretty good. The other thing I mentioned before, use sun for shading. Again, we're still right now that there is a secondary light source. It's coming off the, the camera. So as I move around, it's hard to tell with the shadows, but uh, if I turn use sun for shading on, then the lightest face is the one facing the sun and the darkest face is gonna be the one away from the sun. So that is something you might wanna consider turning on um, just to keep consistent look and feel. So that's not gonna change depending, like if you move your camera, this is gonna say the only light is on the sun. If this is turned off, then you have that light that's on the camera wherever you're viewing from as well. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Now, here's, here's this is what I like. This is the part that I, you know, when you make a video like this, you save the, the, the coolest part for the end. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna turn on ambient occlusion and shadows. And I mean, it looks good now, ambient occlusion by itself look good, but when you when you combine both of them, it just gives that depth to the model where this doesn't look like just a static 3D model. So I can toggle either of these on or off and either of them look good, but both of them together look so much better. It just looks so cool. So here where I had this, you know, with just shadows, this is kind of a consistent color all the way through because the sun's not hitting this or this. Right, so right here, this is all the same, all the same, all the same. By turning on ambient occlusion, I get that second level of shadow, that bounce shadow that gives me the division between the pieces. So um, I'm a huge fan of this, of being able to turn on both the ambient occlusion to give me that depth, and then also give me these overlaying shadows. It just, I don't know, it just makes the model look like it has more depth. It just, it just looks deeper and better. So something to note about this, um, with the new graphics engine in 2024, ambient occlusion is pretty fast. So I could have ambient occlusion turned on on a larger model. It'll perform pretty good. Shadows still stutters a little bit if I start to get real big models. So if I have a really large model, I may want to turn shadows off while I'm working and turn them back on when, when I want to uh, actually get my final output. But uh, yeah, just something to note. There's a difference in how it handles ambient occlusion shadows. Um, so, but yeah, check that out, try it out. Uh, ambient occlusion and shadows, they do work differently, they do do different things, but when you stack them up, you can get a pretty amazing looking image. So there we go. That is a, just a snapshot of that, how those work. I mean, I, I liked ambient occlusion from the second it came into the software, but playing with it and overlaying it with shadows, oh man. So cool. I, I mean, if you guys watch the model, I don't use a whole lot of shadows in general. I just, I, I, don't know, I like the model to stand alone. But as soon as I could do that and the ambient occlusion, I just, I, I don't know. It's just something about that look, that feel. It just feels so much deeper, feels so much better. So check it out yourself. Ambient occlusion and shadows work great apart, work beautiful together. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here to be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. What do you think of ambient occlusion? What do you think of shadows? How do you like them set the best to give you the best possible looking model? Let us know about that or, or let us know of any other ideas you have that you think would make good videos. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.